Okay. So, in Farnell, at one point he's talking about an LFO, and um, it's an LFO to control an alarm, right? So the idea is that we have a sine wave, and he says, let's multiply this sine wave by a big number. So what is that going to give us? It's going to give us still a sine wave, but with a much bigger amplitude. Now, if this is the range negative one to one, then what is this? This is clipping, right? That's no good, we don't want that. So Parnell says we should clip the signal. Now he says between zero and one, but that's the same as negative one to one. It's just you know working in a different coordinate system. So if we clip this from negative one to one, what do we end up with? We end up with a signal that looks like um, this, right? It's basically a square wave because that's what we clipped off, right? So now if you didn't have a square wave oscillator available to you, this is how you would use a sine wave to replicate a square wave. But we do have a square wave in web audio. We just say dot type in our oscillator equals square and then, or something like that. And then we get a square wave. Right, this is like, yeah, this is gain times 100. Doesn't matter, any big number. And then we clip. The point is, though, this is how you make a square wave out of a sine wave. We don't need to go through all that work. We can just say, I just want a square wave. Right, right, exactly. So, yeah, we would need to use um, what's called an audio worklet node or some uh, audio worklet node allows us to write a custom uh, audio processor. So it's actually basically the same thing that I used for making brown noise. Um, and that would allow us to uh, write our own sort of custom processor for this signal and say, well, I just want, what would we do? We would say, I want the min of um, one and the signal and the max of negative one and that. And you just run this thing through an audio processor that does this. But again, not necessary for us. <laughs>